once the industrial revolution came there was a specialization of labor right and uh, from that time onwards what happened uh, people started doing one particular part of a long assembly line so then you know obviously technology is improving and uh, people have realized that uh, what do you say it is easier to have robots which can replace humans you know they can do it much faster cheaper they can waste less uh, material and uh, you know it's much more it's a be uh, it's better in the long run also as in like uh, you know the people make more money as in so in those ways yes uh, so robots are uh, what do you say replacing humans and doing a lot of these tasks which are mainly repetitive rather than uh, what do you say which are very uh, skill oriented specialized so this is why robots i think are replacing uh, humans if anyone wants to add thing is how we look at it is very important like whether it is a good thing or a bad thing i would say that you know it is not a bad thing especially because uh, robots have been replacing humans in a lot of ways in the past also and the only thing is if people are getting unemployed the they'll just be redistributed in some other industry so it's just redistribution of employment and it's not i don't think it's a bad thing oh, just uh, adding up to his point uh can't we just look at it this way like doesn't it increase the efficiency basically uh, we can maybe say that a uh, people are working less to earn more the efficiency of human kind is increasing because of machines so this is another perspective to the same situation i think uh, that uh, robot robotics are sort of dehumanizing the society uh just because uh, there are certain things like robotics can make us uh, efficient in our work they can save our time and energy but still the fact is that they cannot teach us the usual human emotions like we can talk about love we can talk about affection the robotics won't teach us and uh, there is a very simple example that small children uh, learn uh, from their uh, interaction with others not with robots like they uh, react to a situation uh, what uh, in the same way their parents or other people have reacted so they'll uh actually uh, learn from them not from the robots like what exactly are we doing uh if we are uh, letting the children be exports to robotics we won't be they won't be able to develop their emotional side the machines the robotics basically increase the efficiency <laughs> and it's more up to the society how they develop it and uh, so there are things you know which society can uh, take up to progress so robotics can be helpful for us and we could uh, it could lead us to devastation and regarding the love part i i don't think i mean i, do, I don't see it coming there <laughs> because we are humans made for that so doing that stuff the, the way uh, siddharth initially started of i mean uh, regarding how the robotics kind of replacing uh, humans i mean talking about the industrial revolution and all that i think these things were uh, concepts majorly in the western countries which means i'm i'm basically talking about european countries and and the us so and even japan i mean japan is already uh, obviously there so my point is that these are countries where the population is less and they have a lot of uh, like the, the kind of industrial uh, needs to take care of so their uh, robotics uh, does play a huge role but come to think of what would happen in china or uh, in uh, india i mean if literally everything is i mean you, you know how robotics is it's basically programming of something right so if it starts happening at each and every step so we are going to be losing uh, too many jobs in the country i mean come to think of it nowadays we are talking about smart uh, i mean driverless smart cars and all that so if we start having that i mean think of the auto wallas the uber drivers all of them in india so i i think most of these should be in a i mean context based in the sense where uh, which kind of a work should be replaced and considering the demand and supply and all that of that particular region and that kind of a i mean informed decision should be taken if you take the example for uh, say medical we have robot assisted the word is assisted because you still have the human touch there it's not we haven't been able to come up with uh, totally automated surgeries and all because now because if th that comes into play then technically the, uh, no doctors will be there it is more of what industry it is related to we we don't have automated uh, musicians or automated music uh, players kind of thing so uh, that's what i uh, so this debate we are basically having this having a discussion on uh, do robots dehumanize society but we need to take into consideration the fact that 
we are demanding this. This is something we want. If we can't cry for mobile phones and then say robots are dehumanizing society, we cannot cry for the fact that we need better healthcare and then cry robots are dehumanizing society. If you have a demand, human society is going to supply supply the it's going to supply the demand. And the, the answer of society was robotics. There is no better solution. There, there's no better solution to this problem. Now. Do we now? Can we do away with robotics? No. Unless we change our expectations of life, unless we change our demands, there is no way we can do away with robotics. Uh, it isn't today that uh, something is being replaced due to certain reasons. You know, there have been so many professions which have become outdated, and people no longer follow them. So, uh, in hundred years, maybe drivers or uh, the act of driving a car, the profession of driving a car, will become obsolete. It doesn't mean that people have to, you know, say, oh, uh, you know, all drivers have to go on a strike and say, uh, the driverless cars developed, uh, being developed are, uh, you know, taking out. It will obviously happen. As the passage of time goes on, you know, there are countless examples. Let's start with, say, a telegram operator or, uh, let us say, uh, you know, people who used to drive horse carriages. Who uses horse carriages nowadays? So all these things are, you know, natural. It's, the, the, it's you know, organically developing. People always go for technologies and people always go for things which will make their life easier, better, cheaper and uh, you know overall a much better place to live. And this is the natural progression. Oh, no point we're missing here is the creativity aspect. So uh, when robots are doing things, they're all similar, they're all basically photocopies of one another. Uh, even now say in textiles, say in paintings, the handcrafted ones are very valuable. So th that factor we are missing out on. So robots should be used to uh, aid mankind. Uh, they should be uh, used to perform tasks which are repetitive, which are time consuming to increase those tasks. But the, the uh, main core of the job, like the finishing touches should be given by uh, humans uh, to add variety. I think uh, that we man has created technology, the technology should not be able to recreate man. That is it. Uh, it should not be done. So rightly said, like we need a balance and also similarly we need a control to it. So we should be the master of thing. Yeah. So uh, I have a different thought, I mean not uh, continuing on the, uh, the previous thoughts. Uh, I'm starting to think like for example the current arguments that uh, people have uh, regarding Uber drivers versus the auto walas. Mm -hmm. What they usually uh, discuss is that the, I mean it, it, it's not uh, a good thing that the auto alas keep complaining about the Uber and you know the advent of the Uber Ola technologies and all that. So they say that they must uh, you know improve themselves or make themselves more efficient in a way to compete with them. Yeah. So do you think it is, it is, um, I mean it is feasible or it, it makes any sense at all to say that the, uh, I mean you, you must not keep complaining about unemployment but they must actually compete with the uh, upcoming robotic uh, yeah, trains. So, since you came up with driverless cars, so it, it I mean, I like driving, so you get the pleasure out of driving. It doesn't mean uh, you have, you just sit in a box with four wheels and you say, okay, now go to so and so place and it starts uh, rolling. Uh, like she said, there are aspects in life which can't be replaced. Uh, there are few. Uh, emotions or feelings we do get out of it which can't be replaced by any a silicon chip. And we're also ignoring the fact that uh, we're also, our, dis our discussions have been very restricted to hardware robots but now we need to shift our discussion to what are called software robots. Now you have AI which is developing AI. You have you have robots we are teaching other robots to think to adapt to this. Now if you have robots which do that, now you may consider a repetitive tasks to be something which needs to be automated. But there are people who may consider innovation to be something which needs to be automated. There are people who are going to, are going to have that demand and there is going to be a supply to that demand. And, and there are soon going to be robots who are going to innovate better than humans. Now, are you are you going to deny those robots? Are you going to, are you going to say that no, we don't want to develop robots which can develop better products, which can develop, say, faster mobile phones, which can, say, develop... Uh, which can say uh, come up come up with a cure, ca cure for cancer within six months if humankind takes 20 years are you going to say no we're going to wait for 20 years and let people who are going to die from cancer die for 20 years or are you going to side with AI that's a decision we need to make uh, going ahead with the Aditya's uh, post you know there's a lot of this care uh, you know there's a lot of fear around this saying that you know AI will soon take over the world and uh, they will uh, you know all these posts uh, you know, dystopian worlds where, uh, you know, robots are the kings and men are slaves. So, you know, that isn't, uh, you know, those are all factors, is what I believe. You program the robots and, uh, what do you say, the, 
it is still running on a set of code and it uh, there is no magic by which it can just loop its antler unless the human <laughs> makes an error the human uh, puts a you know loophole in it and then it can do all this nonsense so you code the robot properly it's still going to uh, do what you wanted to do so all these uh, you know the fear this irrational belief that one day uh, you know if you keep uh, researching into robots one day the robots will rule us all is you know is uh, is not based on anything and coming to uh, shrini's point on uh, you know should it uh, is it fair that you say uh, auto wallas should uh, you know auto uh, auto driver should you know not complain or what see uh, again coming back to my previous point on everything obviously goes through this uh, phase of uh, you know life so auto wala it is a better business system and uh, until unless the government comes up with say uh, you know subsidies or protection you know the invisible land and so on until and always in a market uh, perfect complement way it's just going to happen that the person with the better product wins so what is it it is always something like better technology always trumps and uh, older technology this is not going it didn't uh, it wasn't it isn't just today it isn't tomorrow it's been since thousands and thousands of years so if anybody wants so what yeah so one i will be doing one last point so we do need to i'm not saying that we we should not completely interfere we do need to be careful because i would like to quote one example i think uh, i'm not, i don't i can't even the company so they coded a bot and they let it out wild they let it out on twitter and within a, a little while it became a sexist it became a misogynist it became Nazi, a, a neo nazi entity so yeah so Yeah, we need to be careful we definitely need to be careful we need to keep this so, so, like and i think that they yeah sure uh, i think that they um, and they can be nothing which can be a better creator than man like what man has created be it artificial intelligence okay you may have a point in that i think that uh, man is the best creator uh, you are talking about innovation find the cancer drug uh, if i take that example Lo- you are telling that uh, people are uh, expanding to uh, 20 30 years to develop a particular drug for cancer the type of research which we do that cannot be done by an ai how much efficient it is because humans somewhere use their emotions also even in the research you cannot say that it is a science background or a computer background so the human cannot uh, i mean the robot then also cannot use the emotional as- aspect at least whenever we are developing a drug humans they consider the fact that how many people will die in the trials the so much amount of animals have died say rats have died how many monkeys will die so what will be the effect on the humans so that cannot be thought yeah that cannot be thought by an ai anyhow but i don't think so coding the ai yeah. human can always code a uh... No. Yeah, how will you code that? You know, the, the receptors in the body are different. I'm just uh, that is my opinion. Yeah. So okay, so to conclude our point, you know, uh, I think a lot of us agree that technology and uh, robots are still going to carry on into the future. It is not going to stop one random day, and uh, so this is the course of life. So you know, it is we have, we have to treat it with get care and uh, you know proper uh, systems and regulations in place. But the what is it? It is inevitable. Uh, it is an inevitable fact that robots are going to replace humans in a lot of tasks.